It's episode 127, fire lights, fire. Woo-hoo. Did we talk about the new lighting? Yes. Yeah? We're working on it. How does it look? We're working yeah. on it. I know, I looked crazy on a Zoom. I hate Zooming. You were too very white. Oh, I was too white. Now we have I'm sure a- I shocked all of Southern California. Now we have a soft glow. Soft glow? Yeah. Do I look like a softer glow? Totally. Um, turn so many things. Happy premiere week. Um, it's St. Patrick's week. Premiere week, right, of the special, um, which I saw a bunch of your guys' pictures, a ton of them, and they were all so great of you guys watching with by yourself or together or with an animal. <laughs> I really like the animal ones. I like to see which animals care. Baby cat and the other two cats could give a shit. <laughs> that uh, she, They only like it when I show them cat videos, but they, they love it. Yeah, my whole TikTok and Instagram's cat videos. And then if the, well, the cat has to be speak, talking. It has to be meowing. And then baby cat, like, looks behind the phone. She's very interested, though. Somebody told me there's an animal channel. Is that true, where it's animal videos while you're gone? So, like, I, I don't know. I thought of the idea years ago, and then somebody goes, Kathleen, they already have that. I'm like, oh. Cause like, so it's a... For animal, if you're leaving your house for a couple hours and you want to leave the TV on, I don't think Baby Cat cares about the Murdoch trial. But I do think Baby Cat would care about some other cats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, premiere week. You guys have kept the special up there in the top thing. If you can go rate it for me, unless you hated me, do not rate me. But if you <laughs> liked it and you give up five stars and then add it to your list, that helps, as the children tell me. The algorithms, and I do understand what one is, but not really. But they don't need to know that I don't really. I just go, "Uh uh-huh, sure, no problem. Totally agree with them. And we will get the T-shirts out. But I just enjoyed the pictures anyway, but I did promise T-shirts, and that will happen. It's just been a little cuckoo lately. Um, What am I drinking from Southern California? Because that's where I went. Captain Fatties, that's where I used to call Lewis. Fatties, not fat anymore. We never was fat, but when he right. when he was super chub and he calls his stomach Baby Louie, when Baby Louie got out of control, I called him Captain Fatties, and they actually have a beer. It's a beach beer made in uh, somewhere out in L.A. I got this. Um, L.A., but oh, Goleta. So that's up by Santa Barbara. Um, the weather, and I was there for many years in California, Los Angeles, Hermosa Beach. Uh, the rain... It hailed. I mean, it's like end of world shit. And then everybody's like, yeah, okay, we're still doing everything. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Because I went out there. I do not do not enjoy flying into LAX. Um, I do not enjoy renting a car there. But once you get it all settled, it's fine. Um, to do the Kelly Clark sh- Clarkson show. And then Access Daily with Mario Lopez and Kit. You know, and I got to say, I prejudged him a little bit. Really? Well, I thought, I don't know. He's cute. They, He's always been on TV. Wasn't he on one of the kids' shows? I don't, Saved by the Bell? Was yeah. he on that? Yeah, he was the hot guy. He was, he's still the hot guy. He was slinger. He, but he's really, <laughs> really, really good at what he does and super smart. Not that I thought he was stupid. Or anything. Yeah. I just thought he probably doesn't care anymore, right. I think is what I thought. Mm-hmm. He's probably over it. And he was actually having fun. Cool. And Kit was just a, a party in a box, mm-hmm. that lady. Yep. Uh, but first we'll start with Kelly because um, you get, okay, so this is just termite shit. And if you don't care about show business, I won't keep talking about it. But occasionally, because normally I don't. But back in the 90s, mm-hmm. I'd say the late 90s, early 2000s, the talk shows, they became your backstage presence. It started getting out of control. I think they were trying <laughs> to be better than the other person. Oh. Like, if you were to come and stay at my house, everything in the guest, guest bathroom says Tonight Show. <laughs> All of it. My dad walks around in the robe, you know, well, look at me. I was on the Tonight Show. I'm like, Dad, it was free, and it's a really good robe. Yeah, Don't robe. make fun of it. You can make fun of it, but just remember that the reason that feels so good on your body. So they started giving away really great stuff when you got to the, as a present for coming. I mean, it got crazy, like coats and robes and towels and for. Yeah, I have a lot of things to say that tonight show. <laughs> a picnic basket. Nice. Yeah, just stuff where they were out of ideas. You're like, okay, we're out of ideas. Like, That's what? Cool. what I, I've never been on a picnic. No, I mean, whatever. It was nice, but it's like something out of Sound of Music. Who's going to really do that? <laughs> 
But then they all slacked off. And then it got down to dog shit. And then it just got, welcome to the show, here's your closet. If you need somebody to comb your hair, call us. Like, it just got, it got really lame. So I figured that would be the thing forever, which is fine. I know how to, you know, make my hair look normal. Um, But Kelly Clarkson, she's rolled back the clock. The backstage there was the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my life. The parking, because on those lots... It's the reason I quit auditioning for shows. I didn't want to deal with the parking. You get to the gate, and they're like, what's your name? You'll be at that gate for like 45 minutes. And they go, you don't have anything to do here today, lady. Like, I'm busting into Warner Brothers or some <laughs> shit. I could care less. I don't even watch these shows. Like, if this was the ID channel lot, you'd be better watch out for me. Right. Yeah. Um, you watch Kelly Clarkson. No, I mean, I'm saying the Warner, when yeah. I was auditioning for shows right. that I didn't even know what they were on. Like, I, did, I didn't do that for long. I just, I didn't even want to be an actor. I'm like, what am I doing? And now I'm getting yelled at at a gate I was told to go to. Yeah, just fuck off. Right. Um, Kelly, though, no, I like that show. She's a she's a party in a box. She's a lot of fun. She seems cool. And it's very hard to be that fun that early in the morning. I was struggling with that myself. Um, she must wake up like at three. I don't know how you can be that alert and on it. And everybody that works on the show. And then, well, my friend Bob works there. Bob came by to say hi. Um, and then uh, one of the cameramen, um, I heard... Hey, Kathleen. And I knew the accent. I'm like, that's somebody from where I'm from. And he goes, Springfield Mo, shout out. I'm like, that's right, Springfield. Voted one of the top five places to live in the United States, by the way. Yeah, I'll get to that next week. But uh, so Kelly, now that it had Miss Pac-Man in my green room, I'm like, oh, you shouldn't put this here. You should ask, does anybody coming in this room have addictive qualities? Because that's all I did for three years after work at a restaurant when I had to wait for rides. Um, This... Do you get a gift bag back there? Look, check this out. Sorry, Dolly. Well, here, I'll just... Anyway, the bag, it's... No, 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 show us, show us, show us. Well, I can't. The yeah, move. Kelly Clark's, if you're on, not... Li- if you're just listening, it's a ve- oh, it's a wonderful, like, summertime, whatever, it's a good tote beach bag. tote. And then inside the bag, she picks an album for everybody. Oh, cool. I got the best of Whitney Houston. Oh, nice. And I happen to have a record player. Cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, so that's great. There's a bottle of wine. And then these mugs, hold on, this is really adorable. Everything about this thing, look, it says sweet, and this is, it's a wine deal. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and then there's a larger one. But, um, is that for me? Um, no, that's not for you. you get, Why? Because you get the swigger big one. Oh. Yeah. For what? It, well, you put like a whole seltzer in there. Nice. Yeah, this All is right. more like a, a very light Pinot. Can I have the bag? Mm-hmm. Yeah! You can have the bag. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the whole thing was, it was great. So if you, it won't be on for a while. I'll let you guys know when they're backed up and she tapes two shows a day. Oh my God. And then Jay Leno was going to be on the other one, the next one. And I wanted to stay, but I couldn't cause I had to go over to access daily. And, uh, Bob was like, Jay's asking where you at. I'm like, oh. Jay's lo- I love Jay. I feel like he's one of my cool. special needs friends. <laughs> They just come up, hey, doll face, how you doing? <laughs> I'm fine, Jay. Could you please stay off vehicles for a while? Could you please have your wife, Mavis, who's better than you, drive you around and stop maiming yourself in your 70s? Yeah, stop it. <laughs> but I guess he, um, he, then she does a lot of like personal story things. If you know, it's daytime TV. Um, the whole thing was wonderful. I've never had a parking spot that good. I know that sounds stupid, but if you've ever been on these lots, it can be horrible. And it was pouring down rain and hailing. And I'm like, look, I did blow dry my hair for this. I got up early. I had to go get coffee in the hotel, wake myself up. Yep. And that girl, even, well, I won't go up. Even that girl. She's like, are you going to Universal Studios? I'm like, I am, but not to go to Harry Potter World. I have to go. They're da- obsessed. Da- they're obsessed. It, even the girl that worked there was like, I love Harry Potter, but the lines are too long. I'm going to wait till it fades out. I'm like, it's never fading out. No, it's not. Everybody loves um, yeah, everybody is into it. So, and then I did Kelly and then I went over to access Hollywood and those guys were so fun. Um, that show super duper fun. My friend Jen, she was there. Um, yeah, I'd never met Kit or Mario. Well, I did Mario's, uh, radio, yep. which is a zoom. Mm-hmm. So I already kind of met him, but I didn't know him before that. Um, then I went over, this is why there's a loaf of bread here. 
to do my good friend Tom Papa's podcast, Breaking Bread with Tom. Baking bread. No, breaking. Breaking? Like breaking, like Italians. He's Did Italian. He loves, this thing is so, I shouldn't be eating bread. He made that? Yeah, he makes Whoa. bread. I, he, I think he always did, but then during COVID, he started making videos. And if you're a, a cook person and you're into it, I would never, this is too hard to make. I'm yeah. not doing it. Especially when I have a friend who already is doing it for fun. Right. You do it. I'm not doing it. But if one, with olive oil, that's a podcast. I think that's already out. I'm not sure. I've lost track. But you can go listen to that. Okay. He's an old friend. His specials are on Netflix, I believe. Yeah. He's very, very funny. I... He has the funniest joke about mean girls. And he said his daughters are mean girls. And he's like, I'm responsible for mean girls. I'm feeding them. I'm housing them. I'm giving them heat. If you're bored, I like Tom's comedy a lot. And we do a lot of corporate gigs together because we're both reasonably clean. Um, yeah. But just in general, he's a great guy. So uh, I already did what I'm drinking. That This came... And we don't have too many of these to do to the rhyme. It, uh, though this came in the mail from Indianapolis. Although we can't send you beer, we know you like a uh, nap in a hammock. And this is from Metazoa Brewery, and it has a sloth. Who doesn't oh. like a sloth? Um, so we got to the pint class, and then they got me a funny sticker. It's from Munster, Indi- Indiana, with a cat on it. Um, termites, Jennifer, and Britt. <laughs> and then they put her, him. <laughs> <laughs> You can be whatever you want. I don't care. I don't even know why people are fighting about that. Who gives a shit? Um, oh, tiny stickers for the notebook. Yeah, so this is great. I'm going to have to go to this brewery the next time I'm in Indianapolis. But first, you'll have to get me out of St. Elmo's and their shrimp sauce. That's right. First, you have to get me out of there to get me to go to the brewery. Um, and then the Ryman, the last thing from the Ryman. I forgot to show you. They give you, they give you a nice little backpack. All of a sudden, everybody's giving presents again. Nice. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, this wine came, it's got two horses on the front, and then it makes me want a horse. But I don't have enough room for a horse. You can't have a horse. No, I'd rather have goats. Yeah. Goats are more fun. Um, well, horses are, I mean, they're just so much work. But Old Black Easy, it's a Tennessee wine. It says handcrafted table wine, Tennessee wine with a Tennessee attitude. Nice. From the, and St. Patrick's Day socks, which, coming up, right around the corner. My birthday. I'll be in Memphis. It's it's Paddle's birthday yeah. on the 16th. It's very excited. Would you like to reveal how old you'll be? No. 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 All things remaining elusive. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is a uh, congrats on the Ryman show. It is, that does deserve one. That is ama- an amazing place. Um, uh, Termite Judy. So nice. I got that backstage. I think people always wonder, does this crap ever make it backstage? And it does. Yep. Um, Oh, they, Kelly gave you his popcorn, too, which I've already tasted. And was, well, that's what we're tasting here. Well, I already tasted it, but I'll... I'll it was What's it called? Two days ago. It's called um, Rob's Backstage Popcorn. Okay. And my publicist guy's name is Rob, and I'm like, did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> is this what you're doing instead of working on my career? <laughs> Fucking making popcorn. <laughs> what's the flavor on it? Barbecue. No, oh, what's it called? What kind of barbecue? Nothing. It's good. Oh, Kelly's Classic Barbecue. Yes. Established 1989. Yep. Wow, plant based, good and free. My sister will be only 50 calories a cup. It's delicious. It's really good. It has a, a light hint of barbecue, which mm-hmm. in a good way. Not too much. A little bit of Texas. All right. Um, so it was a big week. And then there's going to be another big week of New York stuff. But in the meantime, I'll be in New Orleans. Yeah. Um, well, I signed up for some tours. Yeah. Um, my friend Michael Somerville's coming down. Uh, he's a good New Orleans drinking guy. We'll have a lot of fun. I'm going to go to the cemeteries, and I want to see, um, you know, Marie Laveau's stuff, and I go to the voodoo shop, yep. and I get T-shirts that are so crazy awesome. That place is real creepy, though. They're like, please don't take any pictures in here to disturb the spirits. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of believe it, you know. I I believe it enough to not take a picture, put it that way. Because my sister the one time goes, do you really believe this shit or they're just doing it to make you think there's ghosts in here? I said, I don't even care which is true. They've convinced me enough to not do it. 
No, I'm not. I even feel weird in the cemeteries there because they're so spooky and um, I don't know. All right. Moving on. Um, I don't have any queen news, except I did on the plane watch the Tanya Tucker documentary. Oh, you like it? About, I did like it. I like her. Because no matter what they say to her, she's like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. She, she like, she believes you, but she's like, yeah. And then she just fires up another cig, and she's like, I got to quit smoking. Everything about her I can relate to, where she kind of just wants to stay at home smoking cigs in her bed with her dogs. Um, And she likes being home. But she, I mean, it's amazing. Since she's been 13, she's had Delta Dawn. It's something to see. And the, the clips of her as a kid and the... I mean, I don't even think she thinks about, like, maybe there was an, I don't know. It's a lot. And you're like, wow, you know, people are so protective of their kids. And then on the other end, the other end of that is her daddy going, we got a gig Friday at the bar. Come on, little girl, get out of the bathroom. Like, yeah, get in the truck is right. All right, moving on. Update. Update. Go watch a Tanya Tucker thing if you, if you like her. It's good if you like her. If you don't know her, you don't like her, watch it for a few minutes, see what you think. Um, well, wait, before I go into update, what are we watching? Well, me and my friend Nicole <laughs> are so into the Murdaugh trial, and every morning we text each other, I'm juror number four. <laughs> She's number 12. And I'm like, this morning I texted, juror number four, up, seated. Whoa, whoa, very heated conversation. I haven't even had a whole cup of coffee. I was late. Uh I was late to the jury box because I slept late. Oh, really, I didn't sleep. I just laid there with baby cat. Um, Almost sleeping. Kind of sleeping. Yeah, whatever. Uh, So the Murdoch trial is on YouTube. If you have Court TV on your thing, it's there. Court TV is not on Direct TV. If it is, I can't find it. Whatever. It's on YouTube. Um, That has been... Oh, John Grisham is there. At the court? Yes, he's in like the third row. And all of this is because of my friend Mandy Matney, who was not my friend. Mm -hmm. I didn't know her. I mean, uh, but I started. So my comedian friend, Kelly McFarlane, she loves true crime. I love true crime. We pass uh, podcasts back and forth. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember which one of us found it. But this is what pisses me off on Mandy's behalf. So Mandy... Two years ago or more, I guess we'd have to look it up. Because some of the podcasts, quite frankly, get very hard. You have to pay attention. Like, you have to be in the right. Hard meaning very detailed. Mm -hmm. But I kept saying, everybody bitches about young people not working hard. She is doing the reporter shit, which is the exact reason I quit being a journalist. Because I didn't want to do it. I was like, I can't go down in that courthouse and sift through papers. And now, I mean, yeah, but you still have to do the... Even though we have technology, you still have to go down to the courthouse. The papers are filed, blah, blah, blah. Um, She did all the footwork. Then the podcast goes to, starts climbing on Apple. And then it's like number one. Well, then all the jackals come and all the hyenas come. What is this? What is this? And now all of a sudden, because Lewis was saying, how did this become a thing where they're breaking into New York news for hit? I said, because the vultures came. And I am so sick and tired of seeing, and I watched them. I'll admit it because I want to see how much they've, I feel like they stole her work. They recap it because then they're like, oh, what's going on in South Carolina? Some rich guy maybe or maybe did or didn't kill his wife and his kid. Oh, and he's a drug addict. Oh, and he stole all the money from his law firm. Oh, and he had cousin Eddie tried to shoot him in the head. They got dude half ass missed. (laughs) Oh, and he may have killed the housekeeper. Oh, oh, so it's the most crazy psychotic crime, crimes I've ever even heard of. She does all the work. Now, I think she's going to do the real documentary. Like, Netflix just put out three or four episodes, but it's not over. But they're trying to get ahead of it. I know. I saw the guy from Fitz News on there, and I don't know. Maybe Mandy's fine with all this, but I feel like she did all the hard work. They come in for the after party. Mm -hmm. Uh, American Greed has done it, but I don't count that because American Greed just does... The cliff, yeah, it's just a, an abbreviated, abbreviated. But there's also one, I believe, on HBO Max. I don't, I read there's four. But anyway, if you're not watching on YouTube, if you're into true crime, you're running out of time though. It's going to be over soon, at least the arguments, and then they take a field trip to the area where it happened. Um, 
Yeah, and then all I kept thinking is, and this is so me being such a, a baby about animals, I'm like, why do those dogs have to sleep outside in those kennels? I understand they're hunting dogs, but they're still pets. Well, I don't think they're pets. They're not- well, to him, they're not pets. Yeah. They're strictly hunting dogs. I I know, I know. My friend, there's a friend of mine in St. Louis, her dad does it. Mm. South Carolina doesn't get that cold, so it's hot, though. Anyway, here's something not to watch. Let me save you two hours of your life. The Strays. And I'm not saying it because I happen to be on Amazon Prime right now because I'm also on Netflix, but I was looking forward to it. It's a movie. It's not a series. And it's one of those British weird well, I liked the concept. I liked the premise. Mm-hmm. The ending, it's like they just ran out of money. Or like somebody went, I don't know, fuck it, that's good, right? We're good. And then everybody was tired, so they went, yeah, it's fine. It's good. No, it's not good. No, it's not fine. It, I thought, is there another movie after this to explain? I. It's almost so fucked up, you should watch it, but I'd really say watch something else. Go watch all what quiet on the Western Front, the German angle of that. That's my inner Jack Madigan uh, coming out. Absolutely. I loved it. Wow. You're a 75 year old. I, I am sometimes a 70 year old dude in a recliner. I know that. But all quiet on the. You never see the war movie from the German perspective. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Mm-hmm. And it's the last like week before the war ends. Right. And, well, I mean, they show him signing up and all that, and the German, yay, yay, rah, rah, we're going to rule the world, and then it just doesn't happen like that. Anywho, those are the watching tips or not. Update! Okay, this one, this one was, this is a trader update. Now, there were a lot of traders on January 6th uh, that made it into the Capitol uh, that had outfits on, costumes. Everybody knows the shaman guy. And I remember watching this from the morning. I happened to be off. I don't know what day February 6th was, but it, I wasn't on the road. Mm-hmm. So probably a Monday to Tuesday. And I was watching it, and as I was, it was getting nuttier. I watched Trump give his whole speech, and then I saw people moving towards the Capitol, and I thought, oh, wow. So I watched every single minute of it yep. for hours. And I'm texting my friend Chuck because he's in California. I'm like, wake up, wake up, wakey, yeah. wakey. <laughs> they're, att- <laughs> they're attacking the government like physically right. they are going in yep. um but if you watched it for that long like i did that day for better or worse um there were a lot of people that chose strange costumes i mean yeah. the shaman yep. was extremely strange mm-hmm. but this one this one didn't get as much attention as i thought it should have because I couldn't stop laughing as I thought our government was actually being overthrown. <laughs> January 6th rioter, rioter known as Sedition Panda. Oh. They caught him. So there was a guy or a woman who knew. I figured it was pretty tall, but I also didn't know if that was the panda head making right. the person look taller. But I think if you put a panda head on me, yeah, I would right. look three foot five instead of five foot tall. A January 6th rioter named Sedition Panda because he wore a giant panda head while breaching the Capitol has been busted for his role in the cast. Now, I guess you thought, I mean, it's better to wear a panda head than to just go free face running and filming yourself. Like maybe you thought I'll get away with it. But then I thought, is this like a furry outfit? And he's using it for uh, two events? Like, hey, why not? You know, I have it. I I go to my conventions. Why not be the panda that I truly am and go with? He's 37. Jesse, oh it's the first young person. Everybody else I read in these, it's over 50 because it's snap time. And I am over 50. And I can tell you, I've seen it. I have friends that snap. I'll tell you. I can tell you a lot of reasons in your 50s to just snap. Jesse James Rumson, 37, was one of the first 20 people to storm the government complex, which was also the funny part, even though it's not funny, we're attacking the government. Initially, in the rotunda, there were only like 20 people. And they looked, because I was saying to Chuck, "Uh uh-oh, here's the problem with rednecks. They got a plan. We're going to do it. And then they get there and they're like, 
what are we going to do now? They don't, they don't think through the plan. They just have a, an ideal. I got this ideal, and I'm going to do it. Well, there was only 20 people, so they were, like, wandering around aimlessly. And even the cops were like, what the fuck are we supposed to do? Like, they're not attacking us. They're not violent yet. But I noticed the panda. And I'm like, no one's approaching the panda. That would be the first one I would approach. Right. And go, and you go, well, could you please remove your panda head? If I'm a cop, right. could you remove the head? And then if they won't, I don't know what the laws are. But anyway, he was one of the first 20. He was arrested in where? Florida. Oh, Florida. Lecanto, Florida, wherever that is. On Friday, according to court documents, he faces, faces a slew of charges for his alleged role in the rioting, including assaulting, resisting, or impending an officer and engaging in physical violence in a restricted building, building or grounds. Rumson can be seen running through the Senate wing doors, hopping over railing. That is hard to do with a giant hat on. Oh, the head was still on. Yeah, he kept the head on the whole time. Wow. And he had a flag of some sort. I don't remember what it was. It wasn't the Confederate flag. It was, oh. I see how they caught him. At one point, I think he got hot and he lifted his head up and somebody took a picture. Oh my God. He lifted the panda head and you can see his face. He's got a beard, white guy, beard. He, uh, he had on his, he had on his panda head at the time. See the attached photos. The document adds certain unknown individuals were given a nickname for the logical characterization of their video and appearances before they were identified in the footage that day. The individual described above was given the hashtag name of Sedition Panda because at the time, the individual was seen in both open source and other footage wearing a large headpiece that appeared to be from a panda costume. The document of the He appeared to have been handcuffed at some point, but removed the restraints with the help of fellow rioters. Whoa. The panda's in trouble. The panda's <laughs> in trouble. <laughs> The panda's in a lot of trouble, Bubbles. Um, wow. Oh, my God, update. On oh, Tommy, Tom Brady. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. This could be horrifying. The, at the very most, it's going to be horrifying. At the very best, it will be minimally acceptable. Tom's, Tom Brady. Tom. He's going to give stand-up comedy a try. A lot of ex-athletes do that. No. And a lot of ex-DJs and a lot of ex-whatevers. Oh, my God. Shaq was pretty good, I got to say. He would turn up and stuff. <laughs> he, he, you know who else is okay is uh, the country singer who loves comedy so much. Uh, Brad, Paisley. Brad Paisley. He's pretty good. I mean, as far as what you can expect from someone who this isn't their main job. Gronk did it. Gronk. Could be funny, no problem. But I think, sadly, a lot of people would just be laughing at him, not with True. him. Yeah. Um, according to recent reports, NFL icon Tom Brady has developed a new plan, uh, a plan for a new career in stand-up, but his inner circle has been attempting to persuade him out of it. Why not? Right. If he's still in Tampa, run on down to Side Splitters or totally the Improv yeah. and say, can I go on open mic night? Don't announce you're coming. Right. And just go. That's how you're really going to tell. And grow a beard so you don't look like Tom. And then you'll get a more of a real result. I don't think he cares about that. Yeah, I don't think he cares either. No. According to Radar Online, one of the sources is who heard the football sta star staff reportedly state Tom was a terrific quarterback, but he needs to toss this idea before it's too late. As a comic, he's just a water boy, said the source. Um, the, uh, he, he really liked that movie about him, 80 for Brady. Yeah, um, he does a great impression of former team teammate Rob Gronkowski, and his over-the-top Boston accent is hilarious. Well, I would like to hear that, but maybe instead of going to do an open mic night, why don't you just do it on TikTok? Right. Um, the Gronk impression, I'd like to hear too. I'm up for it. I don't think he doesn't need money, though, but don't go out on the road and be a failure. A lot of sitcom people tried it, and it just ends in disaster. Yeah. But people pay to go once to the club because they want to see whomever from, well, the one guy I think was from Save from 
Saved by the Bell. Dustin Diamond, he yeah, passed away. Screech. Screech. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Update. Yes. Update. Elizabeth Holmes had her baby. No. <laughs> no. She had the baby. Yep, because her court documents, um, <laughs> a filing last week has revealed that she's now the mother of two, and she's seeking delay to delay her looming incarceration. As of two today, she has two months of freedom left. April twenty seventh, or whatever. I don't know what the date is today. Does the baby have horns? The baby is it a horned baby? Uh, no, the baby. I think it's a boy. I'm not sure. Um, it doesn't say. She's an April twenty seventh. Is her got a report to jail date? Um, they're trying to keep her out. Yeah, but you know what? No one else would get that privilege. Bullshit. Go watch those women prison shows. All kinds of women. They have babies in prison. Right. The baby. Yeah, they don't get to get out. They don't get to be delayed. It's already bullshit how much time they've given her. This is where I turn into old school mean person. Nope, you're death going to jail. Penalty. Um, death penalty. <laughs> death penalty. You got to settle down on that. Canada. I don't. What happened to the Canadian nice thing? What no, happened to that? I like good people. Um, well, you know that Idaho killer guy, He, if he's convicted, he might face a firing squad because Idaho, uh, Idaho has that. Uh, that would be my preference. A firing squad? Absolutely. But the thing is, I picture my firing squad thing is like I'm picturing – probably in a French prison early 1900s where they take me out into a courtyard and they blindfold me yeah. and thir- 12, 13 people all shoot at once so nobody feels bad about actually killing me. But my thing is that's one more chance to go outside. Okay. It's one more chance to feel the sun if it's sunny. Okay. Um, and it's dramatic. I like the theatrics of it. Oh. The electric chair uh, bothers me because, well, obviously, there why? <laughs> but I have... Um, been mildly electrocuted with a blow dryer once and it hurts like shit. So I don't want to, I can't imagine a full blown, I mean, I was some water on it. I don't know what happened, but it just went my hand and I went back and threw it across the room. The other thing is a lethal injection and nobody can ever find my veins anyway for blood tests. And that would just go on for days. And then they'd have to go get a phlebotomist who's super good at what they do, and then she's going to go, mm, sorry, you don't have any veins. And I'm going to be like, yeah, I know that. Um, so I wouldn't, I would go, still go for fire squad. Okay. All right. Update. Oh, I have a lot. Well, no, two more. This is the FXT guy, Sam Bakeman Freed. Uh-huh. This is a lesson, if you go listen to one of my, out, one of my records, CDs, whatever you want to call them, um, specials. Oh, my dad called, too. He goes, 6 o'clock in Los Angeles, 6 a.m. I happened to be up because I had these early things to do. Uh Yep. Um, Our neighbor Susan says your special is not available in Florida. (laughs) Oh, my God. I go, but I was like, Dad? And I have to scream, and I'm in my hotel room because he's hard of hearing. And I feel bad because it's 6 in the morning, and I'm screaming in a Sheraton I'm probably waking up two other rooms at least. I go, Dad! Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to keep screaming, but I go, I, I've i gotten texts from other people in Florida, and they've seen it. I, I do, th- I, they liked it. I, well, huh. I go, I bet if Susan turns her TV on and back off and on, it, no, she's trying that. I go, well, why don't you invite Susan over since you and Mom saw it? And she can watch you. You can have a a watching party. Well, we've already seen it. Okay, Dad, I have to go. What are you doing today? I have to be on television and then a podcast and then another television. Huh. All right, isn't it raining out there? I have to blow dry my hair. Without electrocuting myself. Oh, my God. I'm like, he does. They don't know where I'm at. I don't even expect them to know where I'm at or whatever. I told them I was going to California. They don't remember. That's fine. But I'm like, Dad, it's 6 o'clock in the morning here. Well, aren't you up early? Yes, <laughs> for a reason. Thank anyway, you, Dad. <laughs> I used to do a joke in my act about my dad telling us because he was a lawyer all those years, and he was usually a defense attorney. 
to never speak to the police, to never speak to anyone. If you've been arrested, your response is and will always be, I do not recall and I need an attorney. And my dad used to he used to go home from work so angry and he'd go, I don't understand it. Why can't people just shut their goddamn mouths? And I am here to help, but I can't help if you won't shut your goddamn mouth. I'm like 10. I'm like, well, clearly people need to, I'm going to shut up. I know that. I'm not saying anything after this display. Um, So Sam Bankman Friedman has a big problem. He won't shut up. Listen to what this fool's doing. Sam Bankman Friedman, the disgraced founder of cryptocurrency exchange FTX, isn't doing himself himself any favors. And he is in a shit ton of trouble, will probably go to prison for 20 years. I think it should be for more forever. Because these people get out and do the same shit over, you know, you know re- reference Billy McFarlane from right. uh, Fire Festival. He's out charging eighteen hundred dollars to talk to him for an hour on the phone. Who's yeah, whatever. They're still they're scammers. They're dangerous. Right. They prey upon people. They're predators. No, I know there's stupid people out there, but not everybody that did all this was stupid. Tom Brady, Giselle. <laughs> <laughs> Despite being charged with, an orchest- with orchestrating one of the largest financial frauds in history and facing the prospect of spending his life in prison, he's been tweeting and giving interviews with media, all in an attempt to defend himself in the court of public opinion. Narcissists always think they know best. They always think there's no way someone cannot believe me. So then they do this shit. They go on TV. They're not scared either. Right. They're not because it's I didn't do anything wrong. So it's why Murdoch took the stand. Right. What are you doing? Shut up and sit down and we might get you out of this. But you want to get up here and, but they think they know better. Anyway, it's an unusual strategy for a high profile criminal defendant who oversaw a company that lost billions of dollars of customer money. And it has left lawyers not involved in the case aghast. Mm -hmm. That's a word you don't see in type very often. Since each quotation and each tweet from Bankman Freed is effectively a gift to the prosecutors who can use the material to build their case against him. I think every white lawyer, every white collar lawyer, well, blue collar too, it doesn't, criminal lawyer would say, shut up, keep your mouth shut and let us do the talking, says Rebecca Merlmestein, a lawyer from the firm O'Melveny. A trail of communication, including eight tweets, a Substack newsletter, I don't know what that's, a handful of lengthy interviews with the media, uh, Bankman Freed has left behind it is already coming back to haunt him. For example, a few weeks before he was arrested, crypto vlogger Tiffany Fong interviewed him by phone, and the conversation turned to his campaign contributions. He reportedly donated $440 million during the 2022 midterms. During the interview, he admitted to Fong that he had steered money to candidates in a way that's difficult to track. All my Republican donations were dark, he told Fong, and the reason was not for regulatory reasons. It's because reporters freaked the fuck out if you donate to a Republican, right. they're all super liberal and I don't want to have that fight. So I made the Republican ones dark. Well, he was later charged with eight criminal counts, including wire fraud and conspiracy to make unlawful political contributions. You can't <laughs> not report your political co- right. contributions. So and this fool just, it's, care. it, yeah, he's just, he also had an encrypted messaging system and he's trying to get everybody to talk to him. He's seeking out interviews. You know what? If, I, if I'm his defense attorneys, either I quit or I just go, fuck it. I'll take his money. Right. If you don't care, I don't care. Mm-hmm. If you won't listen. But I would get so frustrated because if, if you're at this level of defending him, you probably have enough money to pay your mortgage. You don't need this bullshit right. in your life. You want to get somebody that really wants help. Right. And he doesn't think he needs it. No. Um um, if you just, um, well, that, that's the gist of it. We don't need to get in. Uh, Bankman Fried says he's nothing like Bernie Madoff. Oh, I think you are. Here's where you're not like Bernie. Bernie got up and put on real pants and a shirt every day. You have on a ripped up t-shirt and a hoodie that doesn't fit and you haven't combed your hair in seven days. Bernie got up like a full, like a, like a normal adult. Put on clothes, went to an office. Obviously, he did very bad things too, but you're, that's the only way you're not like Bernie is Bernie gave a shit about how he looked. Right. This one, it's all part of the cool kid club. If anybody came in for a job interview, 
or to get me to hire them for anything and was looked like this is get up no because i think you're sneaky and you don't give a shit anyway he's he's just ratting himself out left and right it just made me laugh because i there's that old joke in my act and blah 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 blah. update (laughs) okay so i have two tiger king remember tiger king yeah everybody first of all there's this guy called urban explorer He's on YouTube. Yeah. I've watched some of his stuff. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, he got down to Oklahoma into Joe Exotic's house. What? It's abandoned. In the video, it's twelve minutes long. Uh-huh. We'll put it Schnotes. in the show notes. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Carol Baskin got it, it from the lawsuits. Uh-huh. You had to watch Tiger King. I can't explain it all. I'll make yeah. it fast in case you haven't seen it. Uh, there were over 189 tigers on the ground. They were sent to Colorado. Then this guy, I guess you can just go on foot. I mean, he made it, and he videos the whole inside, and it is something to see because after Joe went to prison, the employee people, some of them still, and Carol's people just lived there, but they didn't have any money, so it turned into this, like, they let horses inside to sleep through the winter. Crazy shit, yeah. Um, so it's after Joe ran off to avoid being arrested, um, then Jeff Lowe left the zoo and tried to start another zoo further down the road, which was shut down before it could open. I went to the Tiger King Zoo and every, when everything was abandoned and Carol Baskin was the owner of it. Yes, she won everything from land to houses and vehicles through a court proceeding. And then it's the um, thing. But if you have any interest, uh, this guy's name is Nick Summers. Okay. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, they even had the shirts. Hanging up. It was like time stopped. It's so, so, so creepy. Yeah. Were those remember those people used to wear those shirts in the show Volunteer Tour Guide? Yeah. Some of those are still hanging up. Oh wow. On plastic hanger. Oh, yeah. No. It's um uh He was exploring the house I found more than I thought. From old photographs, clothes still hanging, furniture, and so much more left behind. This was a surreal experience walking through it all. You could tell someone just up and left in a hurry, leaving everything behind. Even seeing clay pigeons left in Travis's room and bullet encasings. The house is located in the middle of the zoo grounds. Beyond eerie and creepy was the feeling you still got walking through this whole house. The windows are busted out. I mean, I don't, he kept, at one point, and all I kept thinking, because it's Oklahoma, I, I was like, dude, this place clearly nobody's been in. And no. A very, very, all I kept thinking is, you're going to step on a snake. That's all I kept thinking. Oh, yeah. And then about six minutes in, he goes, hope I don't step on a rattlesnake. I'm oh, like, right. Yes. Careful, careful, careful. Um, Anyway, so you can go look at that. So the update is everybody, many, many people, many, many people, as Donald would say, many people are saying that Carol killed her husband. Her husband, Don, right? Carol says Don disappeared to Costa Rica. That he always said he was going to go. Well, here's an update. Tiger King star Carol Baskin says husband Don Lewis officially disappeared in 1997, never to be seen by the public again. But a property he owned in Costa Rica wasn't sold until years later, leaving it suspiciously empty while things blew over. So that's weird. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. I still think Carol did it. I'm just saying I think so she can't sue me. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know that she did it. Um. (laughs) <laughs> no, uh, a recently unearthed report from the U.S. Customs agents claims agents had tracked Don to Costa Rica, where he owned a 200-acre farm, 200 acres of farmland and various properties, and found him alive and well. This is U.S. Customs officials. Okay. Despite him disappearing from Florida, leaving behind his van next to an airfield and no further trace, the Post visited Lewis's last known, the, the New York Post went down there, and I know it's the New York Post, please don't give me any shit about that, it's where I found the story. Um, uh, they visited his last known address in Costa Rica, a two-story triplex in the co- country's capital, San Jose. Although he officially went missing in 1997, a listing to sell the property didn't appear until 2000, three years later. Well, she owned all of his stuff upon hi- them declaring he's dead. It takes oh. a while to, clear, to declare a missing person dead, right. but they were husband and wife, so she gets all of his stuff. So maybe she sold it. Um... The home is in the something district, one of the city's richest neighborhoods, and now filled with gated entrances, cameras, and security guards. 
A longtime resident of the neighborhood was able to confirm they saw Lewis living in the home around the time of his disappearance. When further pressed, they when pressed further, they declined to comment. Lewis had signed over the property to Carol before he disappeared, although she has not ever visited Costa Rica. Um, oh. Yeah, and That's sketchy. yeah, uh, the friend said he told me he was going to Costa Rica that weekend, and he invited me to go with him. I remember I never gave him a firm answer, but he said he was going to move his cats and everything to Costa Rica. According to legal documents, Lewis was the sole owner of the house in San Jose but had created a last will and testament in Costa Rica just three months prior to his disappearance, signing over his properties and assets to Baskin. Wow. Right. Yeah. Why would so, he do that right. if he's just going to run away? Exactly. The two experts deemed it 100% forgery, but we all knew that. Oh, she did that, I see. Before, wow. Yeah. The U.S. will signed over $10 million in assets to Bassett, leaving his family, daughters Donna, Linda, and Gail, out completely. In 2000, Lewis's San Jose was found to be listed on a real estate website owned by Alan Schreier, a romantic partner of Baskin's following Lewis's disappearance. He told the she Post... Had a boyfriend? Yeah. Who is that? Yeah, somebody who either... Maybe they really like animals. <laughs> <laughs> Can I pet your tiger? <laughs> Can I play with your tiger cubs, please? Uh, I don't know. The current tenants of Lewis's last home only know him <laughs> through the Netflix show, which was brought his missing persons case into a national spotlight. Various lawyers who had done business refused to comment um, whether he is, in fact, alive somewhere on the island. I don't think that man would do that to his three daughters. I don't either. Yeah, no yeah. way. Yeah. She's um, an asshole. Oh, Lewis, who is said to have had many affairs with women in Costa Rica, is also rumored to have shady business interests in the Central American country. Yeah, I would assume a lot of people are. Yes. Uh, Costa Rica is beautiful. Tri triggering speculation yes. around him being alive that she said, she said, Baskin said, they said my husband Don Lewis is alive and well in Costa Rica, yet all the drama is made to have me something to do with his disappearance. Well, if you really think he's alive and well, then why are you cashing in on all these things? You've right. de they've, he's been declared dead. Right. I don't know. I don't think we'll ever find out. Because I think he went through a, um, a feeder thing and got chopped up and was given his food. A wood chopper. A wood chopper, yeah. Um, no, a meat grinder. meat grinder. It was a meat grinder for the cats. Yeah, the big cats. Update! <laughs> then I'm done with updates. Wood chopper. Twi <laughs> this is about Elon. Twitter layoffs continue. Elon Musk companies fires 50 more employees amid relentless cost cuts. He also fired the guy who rolled out the whole blue check program that none of us understood. I that person should have been fired. That's one out of 50 I agree with. I'm not sure about the other 49. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter undertook another round of job cuts this week with around 50 people being laid off on Saturday. With this, the company's staff has shrunk by at least 70% since oh. Musk takeover. 70%. What is he doing? He's crazy. I don't know. Me and Luz were talking about it. Like, is there a master plan that he has, or is he just impulsive? I he's think impulsive. impulsive. Yeah. yeah. He's a crazy person, but he's brilliant. In November last year, the social media giant had laid off half its workforce as four advertisers pulled spending. Well, they're going to pull spending. Let's say I, I'm Kellogg's, sale. and I want to tell people about my new Pop-Tart flavor. How's that good for making something up? That's I just great. made that up yeah, on the fly, I'm right? I'm into that. Right? Yeah. I love a good Pop-Tart. Yeah, Jameson Pop-Tarts. Jameson Pop-Tarts. Yes! Heated. Yeah. Yes. Um, but they're not going to advertise on Twitter if the next seven tweets are about so-and-so's a Nazi, you know, crazy. I've noticed the turn in my feed. I don't follow a Marjorie Taylor Green or Green Taylor, whatever her name is. But I, why do I get 20 tweets a day from a, that are retweeted about her saying shit, whether good or bad? I'm just, it's like a, there's a push going on. It's subtle. Whatever, I'll stay on. But, I mean, I've noticed. I'm just saying wholesome things are not going to want to advertise when this is a verbal shit show. Right. Twitter, right. I'm pointing at the phone. According to a report by the information, the jobs cuts impacted multiple engineering teams, including those supporting advertising technology, the main Twitter app, 
as well as technical infrastructure to keep Twitter systems up and running. Well, I haven't noticed any problems with that. Seems fine. While exact numbers are not available, reports suggest that Twitter now has only 2,000 employees. Are there any termites that work for Twitter? Yeah. There's three. I always think, how come I never meet anybody that works for like Twitter or Instagram or Facebook? I know the meta. I get that. They're the same. I know, but you should meet them out at a bar. Don't they ever go out? But it's only 2,000 people out of 350 million. The odds are you would never meet one. It's like a leprechaun. That's good math. Right? Yeah. Right. The company has implemented since October Why a slew of, them? what? Why don't you tweet them all? If you work for Twitter, tweet. No one will tweet you back from Twitter. These people never answer anything. Get on the chat room. <laughs> I was in a chat room with a man named Jeremy that if I ever met in real life, I would kill. <laughs> if I found out I had a week left to live, I'd go find Jeremy from the help chat room. Ugh. And then I'm like, this isn't a person named Jeremy. It's just some computer regurgitating bullshit ask us any questions so i asked a question sorry we don't have anything on that well then stop <laughs> saying any question wow. uh, within india twitter is now closed two of its three offices and fired more than 90 percent of just over 200 of its staff members must noted that the service was experiencing a massive drop in revenue as advertisers pulled spending here's the weird thing too i have a blue check i don't really see ads I don't know where they are. Occasionally. Yeah. Scroll through it. Who cares? Right. I don't know. People act like it's their personal diary. What is this? Who's writing in my diary? I don't care what's on there. You like, you, you're getting into TikTok. I like TikTok. I'm moving. Um, you like I like Instagram. I know that that is Mark Zuckerberg. Some Somebody who reviewed the special mm-hmm. wrote, who's going to tell her that Instagram is owned by? I know. But that doesn't mean I can't like one of his products. I don't particularly like him. And I don't really love Facebook. Mm -hmm. But I like Instagram. There's all kinds of people. Well, you know, Nike um, makes some good sports stuff and their golf stuff sucks. Well, you know, can't do it all, I guess. It was just a shitty little comment. I don't remember who wrote it, but it was like a review person. Uh It was just to be... Snarky, snarky at the end. Who's going to tell her? Mm-hmm. I fucking know, dude. I never said they weren't owned by the same people. Right. Who's going to tell you that I already know that? Right. Let's do that. Oh. That's why I don't write back. <laughs> <laughs> um, following the layoff, dozens of tw- former Twitter employees accused the company of, ma- of various legal violations stemming from Musk's take- Musk takeover. That's hard to say, Musk. Musk. The allegations including targeted women for layoffs and failing to pay... Promise severance. Yeah, he hasn't paid any of that. It's facing at least three complaints filed with the U.S. Labor Board claiming workers were fired for criticizing the company, attempting to organize a strike, and other conduct prohibited by federal, protected by federal labor laws. We'll see. Here's the problem. The wheels of justice turn so slowly that, you know, you need to go get a different job. If he fired you, even if it wasn't right, you can't count on the legal system to get your rent back by next month. Exactly. Uh -uh. N- oh, oh, move it off. Holy shit, they found it. This is crazy. The president of Mexico, President Andre Manuel Lopez Obrador. That's a great name. It's amazing. That's why he's president. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mexico's president posted a photo on his social media account Saturday showing. This is real. What he, because I Googled the shit out of this to make sure I wasn't reading something to you, termites, it's just some bullshit made up. Uh Of what he said to, he said, appeared to be a mythological woodland spirit similar to an elf. Oh. Cool. (laughs) And when you go to the show notes, you'll see it. President Andre Manuel Lopez Obrador did not seem to be joking when he p- posted the photo of an uh, a looks. I get, I even went to YouTube. How do you say this word? Because I don't speak Spanish. A L U X E. A looks. A mischievous woodland spirit in Mayan folklore. He wrote that the photo was taken three days ago by an engineer and it appears to be in a looks, adding, 
everything is mystical. I like a president who believes in this shit. I like it. The nighttime photo shows a tree with a branch forming what looks to be a halo of hair and what may be stars forming the eye's figures. Okay, well, no. Here's why they're not stars. Because there's no other stars in the picture. And there just happens to be two right where eyeballs would be. I would more likely tell you it's a tree frog. I mean, it, it's eyes. I don't know that it's an elf. But, <laughs> but it's not two stars placed midway down a tree. Just And there's no other stars in the photo? No. The um, president has long expressed reverence for indigenous cultures and beliefs. Engineers and work, workers are in the Yucatan Peninsula building... They're constructing a tourist train, the train that is his pet project. Oh. Good for him. Yeah. According to tr- traditional Mayan belief, Aluxes are small, mischievous creatures that inhabit forests and fields and are prone to play tricks on people like hiding things. Some people leave small offerings to appease them. I would. Yeah. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? You don't get it back, whatever you left, who cares? <laughs> the ancient Maya civilization reached its height from 300 A.D. to 900 A.D. on the Yucatan Peninsula and ad- adjacent parts of Central America. But the Maya's descendants continue to live on the peninsula. Many continue to speak the Mayan language and wear traditional clothing while also conserving cons- traditional foods, crops, religion, and medis- medicine practices, despite the conquest of the region by the Spanish between 1527 and 1546. So, go look at it. You be the judge. Cool. Yeah. I like-, I like that the president put it out there, though. Yeah. And it doesn't look Photoshop, but I don't know. Anything could be Photoshop these days. I don't know. <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, they found it. This is cra- this is crazy. I can't believe people. I would devote my life to these things if I was born like a bazillionaire. Like Prince Harry is always whining that he can't go do something. Do this. Do this. A famed treasure ship carrying nearly five million in current value that was lost to the Pacific Ocean in the 1800s has been found by a pair of nautical sleuths. Go be a nautical sleuth, Harry. That would be fun. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Or go look for something. Give you something to do. <laughs> <laughs> the, the SS Pacific, an iconic vessel captained by Jefferson Davis Hall, brother-in-law to Confederate President Jefferson Davis, um, sunk off the coast of Cape Flattery in, in Washington. Flatter, Flattery in Washington State in 1875. Wow. On a voyage from British Columbia to San Francisco, she collided with another ship known as the Orpheus. After a, se- after a second mate on board, the latter mistook the Pacific's lights for that of a nearby lighthouse. <laughs> the tragedy in the water, <laughs> the deadliest at the time, took 325 lives as the ship sunk to the ocean's bottom with $180,000 at the time in gold. 180,000 then. Wow. The Orpheus reached the shore before sinking later that it's night, and its crew managed to d- disembark safely. Well, did anybody not try and go back and get these people? It's not very nice. No. For more than a century, the Pacific's whereabouts was a mystery until two men, Matthew McCauley and Jeff Hummel from the Northwest Shipwreck Alliance, finally spotted the sunken treasure steamboat. They had seen two circular depressions, thought to be the steel's, uh, steamer's wheel paddles, in the seabed not far off from the site of the wreck. It is something that the Alliance anticipated in their elaborate search. The site required close and repeated examination. Sure enough, we were able to image in both, both paddle wheels with sonar in the view. Although its precise location is yet to be publicly announced. Why? Because we don't want little little pigsters coming out there right. and trying to steal stuff. True. Mm-hmm. You got money. They've been granted rights to exclusivity. Good for them. Yes. Um, rather than plunder the lost gold, the Alliance instead wants to open a museum putting artifacts of... This is what... Thank you. Finally, somebody's doing the right thing. Yeah. I mean, you should be able to keep a few gold bars. Or so. I mean, you did a lot of work. You did a lot of work. But could we put the rest of it on display in a museum for everybody instead of auctioning it off? Who wants a shoe from a sunken ship? Starting the bidding at $30,000. Um, the original uh, Yeah, they want to open a museum. First, there will be a legal window for descendants of those associated with the Pacific to claim ownership of parts recovered. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. We believe the wreck is an incredible state of preservation, so we expect that the artifacts we will cover will have considerable historical significance. We're also very much connected to the stories of all those who perished, 
on uh, who perished on that fateful day in 1875, which tempers our celebration of this discovery. Oh. It's okay. Those people have been dead forever. Right. Yeah. Only two people survived. The ship was carrying members of the region's elite in addition to miners returning home for the winter as well as 41 people <laughs> designated as, quote, Chinamen. Oh. Yeah, no human remains of insides is likely. No, there's going to be no human remains. Some shark came by there and went, oh, breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, though, and good for these two guys. Yes. Let's get a museum going. I yeah, would go. Yeah. 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 I would pay... 30. I'll pay 30 bucks to get in. Okay. Yeah, I think if you go over 30, it gets a little nutty okay. for just a museum that only kind of dorky people like me are going to want to. Mm-hmm. All right, we're moving on. Well, let's do this news right here. It's Girl Scout cookie time. Yay! I found the kids at the grocery store. Um, you still have two weeks. Okay. I don't know from the moment I'm saying this, but the TikTok, time's running down. Check your neighborhood. Um, Check your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> um... You can order cookies online now or buy them in person. To find your nearest cookie booth, just visit IWantCookies.org. I love that. Yeah, it's great. I do want cookies. Um, well, I got you a box of Thin Mints. Thank you. And then I got you the chocolate one, whatever. And then I got my sister. The, they have a gluten-free one now. Cool. The Girl Scouts are keeping up. Thin Mints are my favorite. Um. Girl Scouts utilize cookie sales to teach young women about business management, sales, and e-commerce. Those first two things would be why I'd be like, yeah, I'm good. I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> Financial literacy. Now, logistics, getting harder, not going my direction. <laughs> Technology, marketing, and communications. I mean, that's all very good stuff. But as yeah. a kid, you're like, do what? Yeah. yeah. They're so cute. There's 10 flavors now. 10? Mm-hmm. Adventures full, Girl Scout s'mores, lemon ups, tree foils, trefoils, trefoils. I don't know. Dosi tagalongs, Samoas, thin mints, toffee tastic. Raspberry Rally. It's a new online exclusive. Oh, if you like raspberry, online. don't say you didn't learn it here. Don't it. say this podcast doesn't have information that's valuable to your daily existence. <laughs> I bought a lot of these and then I freeze them. And then you have them all year long. I'm a thin mint person. And then my sister will go, that's because you think you're, you're, you're like a thousand-year-old person. Who likes the mint? Everybody that cares about you. This made me laugh so hard. Oh, this is so great. I'm moving on. It goes to Girl Scouts of Southern Appalachians. Girl Scouts of Southern Appalachians. Girl Scouts are great. and uh, But I would like brownies better. That's the group before. In Canada, what is they call Girl Guides. What's before Girl Guides? Brownies. Brownies? Oh, so it's the same. Yeah. Okay. I felt like brownies, we were doing more stuff outside. And I'm an outdoor cat. Yeah. I don't like crafts. Your cat is an outdoor cat. My cat is not an outdoor cat because, well, she's found luxury. I mean, you want to lay under a bush or you want to come in on this couch right. and watch a murder trial? Have me feed your cheese. <laughs> I I give her a tiny piece of cheese. They're not supposed to have cheese. I read it, but she seems to be fine with it. But mostly, no, I bring her treats to her on her blanket on the couch. So she she's not fat. I asked you for a sandwich last time I was here. You said no. I, you asked for a sandwich. I said, make one. They're okay. in the refrigerator if you want one. Uh, yeah. You, but baby cat doesn't have hands. You do. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> This baby laughs. One of my favorite actors in the whole world, and I don't even know enough actors to really have favorites or not. I love Brian Cox, the guy from Succession. Oh. If you don't know who I'm talking about, he's an old Scottish guy, and I love everything he's in. He's been in Nazi stuff. He's been in crazy British. My mom loves Acorn, the Brit Box stuff, where the, the murder shows and all that. Um, he's been in everything. <laughs> so Succession is an awesome show. It's basically a combination of the Trump family, the Murdoch family, just any rich family in charge of a media empire or whatever. And uh, the man who plays his oldest son is named, there's three kids, it's just like the Trumps, and they're vying for their father's affection and to take over the business. That's the whole thing. Who is he going to choose? Is it going to be the daughter who's smarter or the son? Jeremy Strong is the guy who plays the son. And whatever he is doing, 
bothers the shit out of me because <laughs> he's the other ones are all fine, but five? yeah, I can't stand it, but I like the show so much. I just try to ignore it, but he's always like, I don't know. Uh, his, uh, way of yeah. talking. Uh, do you think, uh, we should go so like, but it's good enough that I hate him, the character. So that means he's doing something right. Um, I guess, yeah. right? Well, Succession star Brian Cox doubles down on criticism of Jeremy Strong's acting style. It's fucking annoying. Because <laughs> I'll throw out for the whole show whenever he gets mad because he's Scottish. And most of the time you don't hear the Scottish accent. But when he goes, fuck off, you really hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. He's just an old school guy guy. Uh, I do not know the man. I'm just saying as a fan, uh, Brian Cox is not backing down on his thoughts about Jeremy Strong's acting style. He's a very good actor, he said in a Town & Country interview, and the rest of the ensemble is okay with this. But knowing a character and what the character does is only part of the skill set. Of Strong being always... So the guy's always in character, like even in his trailer. Those people... Yeah, yeah, I'm never going to be hanging out with that crowd. No. I'm going to be with the people that are, you know, oh, we're on break. Let's go have a cig. Like normal, <laughs> just not. Um, he said, he said of him always being a character, it's fucking annoying. Don't get me going on it. Um, in the same interview, he Cox brought up a YouTube video from 2009 where he teaches a toddler the to be or not to be soliloquy. I can't say it. Soliloquy. Soliloquy, right. He goes, there is something in the little boy that is able to convey the character. It's just there, and it's accessible. It's not a big fucking religious experience. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I agree. Then they asked him, Jeremy, what he thinks about Brian saying all this. He goes, everyone's entitled to their feelings. I also think Brian Cox, for for example, has earned the right to say whatever the fuck he wants. So there was no need to address or do that damage control. <laughs> but it makes me happy that he he finds it annoying too, and he has to work with the guy. I find it annoying as a a viewer, but to Jeremy's credit, I don't like the character, and I think that's what he's going for. True. But I don't know what the 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 the, the stammer if that's on purpose or if that's really the way he talks or right. I don't know. That's funny. Yoko Odo is leaving New York. Whoa! 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 First of all, for all you younger termites, <laughs> Yoko Ono is a woman who was married to John Lennon, who was a Beatle, who was assassinated. He was the Beatle. <laughs> I don't know. That's a fight. I think he is. I think the Beatles are fine. I've never been, like, into it. Um, but I remember in college there was a lot. People my age, and the Beatles are not of our deal. That's my parents' deal. Arguing about who was better, Paul McCartney or John Lennon. But serious ass arguments. Yeah. I'm like, you don't hear these arguments about Fleetwood Mac because we all know it's Stevie. Yeah. Christine McVie, wonderful for pop hits. Yeah. But I don't know. Nothing. Anyway, they lived, John Lennon was assassinated outside of the Dakota building and this famous building in New York. And Yoko, who honestly I did not know was still alive, right. uh, she's 90. She's lived there for 50 years. She's, um, She's purchased a farm somewhere in upstate New York, and uh, she's out six Franklin, New York, where in the Catskills, full time. Wow. No plans of returning to the Upper West Side. I wonder how much that'll sell. Well, so maybe the kids will take it. He's got Julian and Sean. Yeah. Hey, do you want the Dakota building? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. So, do you want mom and dad's apartment? <laughs> no, it's like the whole building. Yeah. <laughs> um. Ono and the Beatles legend, John, had purchased the farm initially as a retreat and to raise Holstein dairy cows. Come on. Who said that? Ono now leaves a peaceful life out of the public spotlight, sources say, adding that the small town population has just 340 people. Well, they're all going to know her. (laughs) But she doesn't sound like she gets out very much. The main house on the sprawling estate has four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and outside Ono grows her own vegetables. Nearby, Nearby are a farmer's market and a pizza restaurant. Uh, Philip Norman, his book, John Lennon, writes the English. He bought a herd of 122 cows and 10 bulls for the farm at one point. 
Uh, back in 2013, the farm became a subject of contention when owner, owner son Sean protested fracking, fracking in the state of New York. There was also a rising threat to the farm that sits atop the Marcellus Shale, a rock formation geologist estimate holds trillions of cubic feet of natural gas. Despite being wheelchair bound uh, with her health declining in recent years, she recently revealed that she goes for four miles walk a walk a day to beat depression. Four miles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In 2017, the now 45-year-old Sean pushed uh, pushed her in a wheelchair to receive the National Music Publishers Association Centennial Song Award. Um, okay. She says the illness has taught her mo- so much. It remains unclear what her illness is. Um, oh, but a source close to his staff said the avant-garde artist requires round-the-clock care. Before moving to the farm, she really left the sprawling apartment in the Dakota. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be in a wheelchair, I want to be outside. Yeah. Somebody just push me out there. Right. Come get me later. Exactly. It's fine. I don't want to be in an apartment. No. She was born in Tokyo in 1933. She was born into a banking family who suffered from starvation during World War II. They were often forced to barter household items for food while they sought refugee from Allied bombing ra- raids. Um, yeah, she's 90. <laughs> So there you go. Just thought that was a very unnecessary news story, but now you know because you're going to go, I wonder what happened to that lady. Well, now you know, people. Um, Do you have any of you termites? Listen carefully because you might. Do you have the first iPhone like in a box? I don't. I have it. I have it, but not in a box. You have it, but not in a box? That could still be worth something. First generation iPhone auctioned off. $60,000. 60000 dollars 63. Oh. Sorry, 63. Nice. That's what it sold for. Nice. I have the first Blackberry and I'm still using it. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. <laughs> but I have it. You wish you did. <laughs> first generation 2007 iPhone sold for more than thirty sixty-three thousand dollars in auction online Sunday, more than a hundred times its original cost. Dubbed a first edition. The box had never been opened. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Bidding on the phone began at 2500 bucks. All told, there were 27 bids. That's not that many. No. Yeah. Uh, another unopened first-generation iPhone sold for over 39 in a listing by LGC Auctions that closed in November. Just saying, go through your stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Maybe you have one. Maybe you bought it and forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I think my friend Loreen, she is always the first one to get the new iPhone. Yeah. She should always get two. Well, that's a lot of money. <laughs> it is a lot of money, but it could be worth all that. True. Just, yeah, right. just saying. So this is sort of an update. Okay. Tiny sports segment here. Um, well, I did read that the Cowboys are going to extend Dak Prescott's. <sighs> I'm glad I'm not a Cowboy fan. Yeah, exactly. Just so I'm saying. Live golf. Oh God. I've taught you guys a little bit about this. It's the other one. Greg Norman's in charge. Saudi Arabian money. Saudi Arabian funded. You know. Yep. You decide. Are you going to take the money from the people who dextered somebody? I'm not. Right. Just because I would feel. It's not that I'm morally superior. It's the Catholic part of me that would think something bad will happen to me. And I feel bad for that man that got dextered and his wife who's alive. I don't. Wouldn't take if knowingly. I'm not saying maybe I have taken Saudi Arabian money and I don't even know, but I didn't know it if I did it. And you make so much, you can make enough money on the PGA Tour. You don't need, especially the ones that left the PGA Tour for this horse shit. Dustin Johnson, you've already got millions. Like Brooks Kepka, you've got millions. Anyway, take the judgment out of it, which is hard for me to do. Um, live, so live golf. Greg Norman is better than Donald Trump with the talking and the, and the, the hype. He's a good hype man, but he said they had all these major networks interested in, in airing live golf. Well, the only one they got, I think we talked about it was the CW, right? right. One tree house, one tree hill, one tree hill mm-hmm. house My by the house. river. Right. Um, anyway, it was on last yeah. weekend. Live golf's TV debut was a ratings disaster. It was in Maya Copa, Mexico. I've actually golfed that course. <laughs> Very nice. Um, I turned it on because you can, I had to go, it wasn't on direct. Oh, yeah, it was. 
Yeah, I found the CW. Um, not, I didn't even know it still was a <laughs> no. network. Uh, seriously, no. even if I didn't judge these people. Um, there was hardly anyone there physically at the tournament. Like, people were hitting balls on the greens, and there was no one around the green. Uh-huh. And one, guy, one time, the guy yelled four. I'm like, you don't have to do that. Right. There's no customers. Right. You can hit that ball wherever the hell you want, and you're not going to hurt anybody. <laughs> you're good. The ratings came in at a 0.2. For contacts, another CW program, World's Funniest Animals, beat them. Whoa. More people watched the World's Funniest Animals. I would. It's, um, it, so, so far, it's just not. It's not going well for Greg. No. Um. And then people would go, well, how many people were watching the Honda Classic? I was. Yep. I mean, I had it on. Mm-hmm. And then it went into a playoff. It was good. I like to hear Jack Nicholas talk, but, you know, I'm old. Maybe it's just that. Um, and the Honda Classic is always known to be for, like, middle acts because um, of where it's positioned in the, in the uh, schedule. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a lot of headliners show up there. They're right. going to change that for next year. But it's always been a great tournament to see the up-and-comers and, you know, they don't have, do they have the stars? No. No. It's probably going to be, but I like the course, and I like to watch course. So anyway, there's a little live golf update. I'm going to do your crypto queen. I'm going to. This is fascinating. Then I have a feel-good story. Oh, but wait, I forgot to talk about um, Party City. I have to. So here's the thing. You know how we keep talking about Bed Bath Temp? Oh my God. So my friend Bob went to, I got to turn, my friend Bob went to, um, Bob and Clark, they went to Bed Bath and Beyond to get two king size pillows. <laughs> and I have the text from him. And because he knows I'm obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. And um, they said they were out and it's going to take two to three weeks to get them in. <laughs> A what? <laughs> A pillow? There's probably one way up there. there I'm sure. Um, I'm like, but did you climb the ladder, Bob? No, no. Did you get in trouble? Um, so I keep talking about Bed Bath & Beyond, but it's not the only ones going down in flames. They're uh, closing a lot of stores. Mm-hmm. Walmart, The Gap. The Gap went so Walmart? far downhill. Wait, well, Walmart strategically closes. They close and then they open. So that, you know, whatever. Um, but the last one is Party City. Uh, now, when my sister kids were super little, mm-hmm. they loved Party City. Yep. And I'm like, fine. Right. It, especially in the winter in the Midwest, there's nothing to do. Let's go to Party City. Some Let's buy some hats. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you, it's, that doesn't yeah. even make sense. But they're like, can I be this for Halloween? It's like June. Right. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, you can be that for, but anyway, every time I would check out mm-hmm. and I let the kids buy whatever they want. Yep. Literally, whatever you want. I mean, within reason, but. My bill would only be like twenty eight bucks. Right. I have like I, I have seven thousand balloons. Uh-huh. I have three masks for Mardi Gras. They don't even know what that is. They're oh. seven. Um, and I always thought, how do they make money? I it doesn't that. seem like they're selling enough. Well, not a they're not doing well. They're not. No. <sighs> America's bracing for another max, mass exodus of retail stores across the nation this year with more than 800 big box locations set to close from California to New York. Among the iconic names to announce their downsizing includes Bed Bath & Beyond, Walmart, Party Gap, and Party City. At least 803 stores are are set uh, set to be shuttered over the rest of 2023. And with many forced into desperate cost-cutting measures and rampant inflation and declining bottom lines. That now, the Party City by my house looks closed. They yes, I I really thought holy shit, this one already closed because I went in it for this video that I made about this podcast. I went to Party City, and it's it's just dark on the outside, like there's nothing in the window. And I opened the door and I went in. It's very nice. It was clean and bright, but none of that is conveyed um, through the the outside. Um, Bed Bath and Beyond. The retailer once owned more than 1,500 stores, but a recent purge has got it down to 480. Because you know why? The man missed the internet, and that's why he doesn't have Bob and Clark's pillows. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. Um, Oh, yeah. The company has suffered through that. That's a more, but we don't need to know more about Bed Bath & Beyond. Everybody knows I'm obsessed with that. Um, Oh, 
Second on the list is Tuesday morning. If you guys ever been in one, Those are hard to find. there's one at the lake in the Ozarks, yeah. and it's at the bottom level of an outlet mall. Mm-hmm. I thought it looked like if my mom hosted a garage sale. It was a shit show. Right. Now, there was fun stuff in there, yep. but it was like going at your own risk, dig on your own, mm-hmm. picture frames, just house, like a mini home goods, right. is if you've never been in one. They're shutting down more than half of their locations. Oh. I know. But how about clean your shit up, guys? Huh? I can't even walk down some of the aisles. You look at all this stuff. I'm like, I ain't picking all that up. And I just go to a different aisle. I'm not even, I don't work here. Um, uh, the Home Goods Company is closing 265 stores. This is struggles. This is Tuesday morning. Uh, they're going to have a second wave of closure in three years. A massive reorganization. Filed for Chapter 11, uh, 11 bankruptcy. Uh Virginia is getting a bunch whack axe, Georgia, Colorado. Uh, the Gap's closing uh, 74 stores. The Gap went downhill. The Gap has I used to love the quality. G- shitty quality. Like yes. you buy a T-shirt and the sleeves aren't cut the same length. No. Like, I don't know what happened to the Gap. Maybe I'll try to find out. Um, meanwhile, Party City is expected to downsize. 12 locations currently up for auction across the nation. Oh, they're up for auction. Maybe I'll buy one. Maybe we could do the podcast and parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could put on different hats and stuff. Um, the store is another big brand to face bankruptcy with a further 10 stores closing throughout February. The state that will lose the most party CD locations is New York with five, followed by Michigan with four. So if there's anything you want, get on yeah. down there, termites. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Also on the list is West Virginia, Missouri, oh, Georgia, Illinois, Iowa, Louisiana, New Jersey, Oklahoma, Oregon, and Texas are all losing one. Whoa. Yeah, it's so sad. Um, Macy's is closing a shit ton too, but that's another one. Right. Macy's is, is always got shit on the floor. There's stuff on the floor yeah. a lot, and maybe it's because they don't have enough workers. Maybe the workers that are there don't care. I don't know. Right. Um, I'm gonna do the Crypto Queen. Don't okay. All right, here's my feel good story. Okay. We're gonna close this up. This was really awesome. And um strangers befriend man with Down syndrome after mom offers to pay someone to spend time with him. <laughs> this is in St. Louis, yeah. out in St. Charles, where a lot of my cousins live. Uh-huh. Um Christian Bowers, who has Down syndrome, went viral after his mother's social media post asking a friend seeking a friend. For him to play video games with. A social media post shared by a Missouri wow. mom has led an outpouring of kindness to a 24-year-old son who has Down syndrome. Mm. Oh, that's really cool. Well, she put on Facebook, this yeah. is what I like about it. She requested a young man, because yeah. he's a 24-year-old young man, to yeah. spend two hours twice a month with her son. But there's a lot of girl gamers out there. I'd just like to tell this mom. She doesn't want any Oh, she might not want, yeah. 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 It's not a date. You never, never trust a 24-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> With a hot gaming chick. Right. I, no, I'm, I'm teasing. But, and she said she'd pay the person $80 every two hours. 40 bucks an hour just to play video games with this guy. I'm looking for a young man between the ages of 20 and 28 who would like to make some extra money. Two days a month, I'll pay for you to be my friend's son. All you have to do is sit there and play video games uh, in, his, in his room. He has Down syndrome, and he doesn't have any friends his age. You will not be alone with him, myself. Or his grandma, grandpa will be president. Obviously, he won't know that you're getting paid, but you are there for those. But you are there for him those two days a week. The pay is 80 bucks for two hours. But they got 60,000 shares. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And he's got all kinds of people lined up now that'll come over. That's great money. Well, I think a lot of people yeah. were saying, no, she said, oh. I got to read it to you. Um, yeah. She said, I'll pay you. People she's saying, I'm up. saying the pay because I want to guarantee you're coming. Right. I want you to think of this yeah. as a have to, not a, hey, that'd be nice if I had time. Oh, I ran out of time. I can't right. go see the guy. Yeah. Um, and now he's an addict. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, they gave him, somebody gave him a 65-inch flat screen TV. Oh. A new TV stand, St. Louis Blues hockey tickets, bam, and snacks for his gaming sessions. She said it's like heaven. She never expected the overwhelming kindness of strangers. 
Um, yeah, I saw the quote in a different article, but she's saying pay because I want you to show up. Right. And if I got good money over here, right. somebody's going to show up. There's a feel-good story, people. I liked it. Yeah. Missouri, we have a lot of stories that don't really turn out so well. My state no. doesn't really necessarily make the great headlines because, um, you know, of that, because we're not <laughs> behaving and sometimes doing meth. Um, so there you have it. All right, termites. So um, that's really all I got. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. All right. Congratulations on Kelly Clarkson. All right, go rate the special for me, please, termites. According to the children, yep. it's helpful. I, I've never rated anything in my life. I never think about it. No, and they love the hashtags. Right, the hashtags and all that. But I'll go rate stuff on Amazon now if I really like it. Yeah. I didn't know it really mattered. It, mattered. it does to them. Therefore, it does to me. Because I am here to make the children of Amazon <laughs> very happy. All right, termites. It's going to be a nice week in some places. Get outside. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Good night. Have fun in New Orleans. New Orleans, here I come.